Hey everybody, welcome to Day 8, Section 9.5, Variation Functions. So today we are going to recognize and solve direct, joint, inverse, and combined variation functions. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first variation function we're going to look at is a direct variation. So the key phrase and that we will see if it's a direct variation is something along the lines of y varies directly as x. Okay, when we see that phrase or a phrase very similar, some variable varies directly with another variable. Okay, we are going to use the equation y equals k times x. All right, this k value is called the variation constant. All right, and k cannot equal zero. All right, so when you see that phrase, y varies directly as x, we should automatically be thinking about that general equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump to an example here. All right, so first example, if r varies directly as t and r equals negative 15 when t equals 5, find r when t equals 3. Okay, so there's a lot of information there. So what we do is we go through these four steps. The first step we're going to do is we are going to write the general equation, okay? And the general equation is this guy up above, but we're not gonna use y and x this time. We have to use the variables that they are using. So the first thing I do is I notice this phrase here, r varies directly as t. It looks very similar to the phrase y varies directly as x. So instead of y, what's in its place? r. Okay, so we have r equals k, and what's in the place of x? We should see a t. So it's r equals kt as our general equation. Okay, the next step is we need to plug in values to find our k value, to find the variation constant. So, what values do we know? Okay, well, what we should notice is this right here. We know r equals negative 15 when t equals 5. So those guys go together. So we're going to use those two to plug in for r and to plug in for t to solve for k. All right, so we know r is negative 15, so negative 15 is equal to k times t, which we are told is 5. And now we just solve for k. So dividing by 5, we get k to be negative 3. So now we're going to write our particular equation, and this particular equation is now just plugging in our k value into our general equation. So we really have r is equal to negative 3 times t. Okay? All right, now we can go ahead and do what the question is asking us to do. It's asking us to find r when t equals 3. So now we're going to plug in 3 for t into our particular equation and we'll solve for r. Okay? So r is equal to negative 3 times 3 and what we should get is r equals negative 9. Okay? So there's our final answer. That's what the question is really asking us to do. Okay? So that's an example of direct variation. Let's take a look at joint variation. Okay? All right. So the next variation function 
is called joint variation. And the phrase we will see here is y varies jointly as x and z. Okay, so x and z, uh, they go together. So our e general equation is going to be y is equal to k times x times z. Okay, where again k is our variation constant. And again, it cannot equal zero. Okay? All right, so let's look at this example here. Example two. If A varies jointly as B and C, find A when B equals 10 and C equals 5. If A equals 12 when B equals 8 and C equals 3. Okay? So, the first thing I want to notice is what kind of variation is this? Well, we see this phrase, A varies jointly as B and C. So now we're just going to fill in. Well, what's in the place of Y in this phrase here? Well, that's going to be A. So step one, we're going to write our general equation. Okay, so I'm going to put a little one here. There's step one. Okay, so instead of y, we have a equals k. All right, what's in place of x? Well, that's going to be b. And what's in place of z? It's going to be c. So there's our general equation. Now step two, we need to solve for our k value. So step two, we have to plug in the values that we know all go together. So the values that all go together is this right here. When A equals 12, B equals 8, and C equals 3. So this whole phrase here. Okay? So we are going to plug those three values in for A, B, and C so we can solve for K. So A we know is 12. This equals K times our b, which in this case is 8, and our z, which is 3. Okay, so now we just go through and we solve for k. So we get 12 is equal to 8 times 3, 24 k. Dividing by 24, we get k is equal to 1 half. Okay, so step 3 now we write our general equate or sorry our particular equation with this k value so we get a is equal to now we have our k value one half our b and our c okay and then finally step four we need to solve for what it's asking for. So solve for the unknown. And in this case, the unknown is this information here. We need to ultimately find A when B equals 10 and C equals 5. Okay? So we can go ahead and do that. A is equal to 1 half times our B value is 10 and our C value is 5. Okay, so A is equal to 1 half of 10. That's 5. 5 times 5. We should get 25. Okay, so um, those are the two types of variations. Let's uh, turn to the next page and look at the next couple. All right. So the next type of variation function is an inverse variation function. So the phrase you will see with inverse variation is this phrase right here. Y varies inversely as X. Our general equation for an inverse variation is Y is equal to K divided by x this time, all right? 
k is still our variation constant, and k still cannot equal 0. Okay. All right, and also in this case, x cannot equal 0 because that would make it undefined. So we've kind of already talked about that this chapter. All right, so now let's get to example 3 with an inverse variation um, example. Okay, so r varies inversely as t, and r equals 24 when t equals 4. Find r when t equals 12. Okay, so the first thing we should notice is what kind of variation is this? So this is a key phrase here, r varies inversely as t. So now we just have to look at our phrase up above and step number one, write our general equation. So we should get r is equal to k over t. Okay, so there's step one, getting the general equation. Now step two, we want to solve for k. So what values do we know for sure? Well, we know r equals 24 when t equals 4. Those guys are a pair, so we're going to plug in. So r is 24 equals k divided by 4. Okay? Multiplying both sides by 4, we should get our k value to be 96. Okay, so now step 3, our particular equation is going to be r equals 96 times t. Okay, and then finally step 3, or sorry, step 4, is to solve for the unknown. So what does it want us to solve for? Well, ultimately it wants us to solve for r when t equals 12. So r is equal to, uh, oh sorry, my variation equation is incorrect. Let's go back. It should not be 96 times t. It should be 96 divided by t. Okay, hopefully you guys caught that. All right, so now going back to solving for r when t is 12, we get r is equal to 96 divided by 12. And when we solve 96 divided by 12, we should get r to be 8. Okay? All right, so hopefully you guys are, are getting the drift here. Okay, let's go on to example four where it's a combined variation. Okay. All right. So example four, if P varies directly as R and inversely as T, find T when R equals 10 and P equals negative five. If T equals 20, when P equals four and R equals two. All right, I'm going to get you started on this, but I want you guys to finish it on your own, okay? So step one, this is finding our particular, or sorry, our general equation, okay? So the first thing I notice is P varies, okay? So P varies. So that's the first variable. So I know it's going to be P is equal to, okay? Then we always have a k value. And now the first phrase we see is directly as r. Okay, so p equals k times r. That takes care of this first portion. But we also have an and, okay? So this is a combined variation. So and inversely as t. It's not two separate equations, it's simply one combined equation. So how do we write inversely as t? Well, inverse tells us dividing, right? So it's divided by t, okay? So here's the combined variation. It's combined because it talks about direct and inverse. It combines the two variations, okay? All right, so I want you guys to try it from here. 
Okay, so I want you to find your k value, write your particular equation, and then step four, solve for the unknown. Okay, so go ahead, give it a try, and then uh, I will go ahead and tell you what you should get in the end. After you've gone through everything, you should get t to be negative 80. So if you're questioning how you get that, that's something we'll bring up in class tomorrow, okay? All right, finally, example five. Now we're gonna give, give you a table of values and you have to determine whether each relation shows direct variation, inverse variation, or neither. And what we are really using here is a property. This property is called the multiply, multiply property. Okay, multiply, multiply property. So what we are looking at to see if it is a direct variation or an inverse variation is we look at the pattern between our x's. Okay, so we take a look. To get from one to three, we multiply by three. To get from three to nine, we are multiplying by three. To get from 9 to 27, we are multiplying by 3. All right, so we're multiplying, right? In order for this to be a variation, we need to multiply or divide each y value by the same value we're multiplying our x's by. So in this case, it's 3, okay? So let's take a look at our y's. To get from 5 to 15, we multiply by 3. 15 to 45, we multiply by 3. 45 to th uh, 135, we multiply by 3. Because we are multiplying our x's and our y's by the same value, we can go ahead and say that this is a direct variation. Okay, so it's the multiply, multiply property, all right? If we were multiplying our x's by threes, but our y's by fours, that wouldn't work. These guys need to match, okay? All right, let's take a look at example B, all right? What are we doing to the x's to get from one to three? Well, we are multiplying by three. What about three to nine? Again, multiplying by three, and nine to 27, multiplying by three, okay? What are we doing to the y's? Well, to get from 135 to 45, we are dividing by three. To get from 45 to 15, we're dividing by three. And 15 to five, we are dividing by three, okay? So the one thing I notice is, the threes match, but this time I'm multiplying my x's but dividing my y's, okay? So since we're dividing by the same value that we're multiplying our x's by, this is considered an inverse variation, okay? So we're thinking multiply, multiply property and we have to be multiplying or dividing by the same number that we're doing to the x's and the y's, okay? So if you have any questions on this, make sure you ask them tomorrow in class. Otherwise, have a great night, guys. Bye.